Hey guys, it's Generic. Welcome to my channel. Today we are doing Code.org Computer Science Fundamentals Express Course 2022. There are older versions of this course as well, which you can find up here if you're on the page that I'm on. But we are doing the course that is for fall of 2022 through spring semester 2023. Code.org usually puts out their new courses in the fall. So the even though we are now in 2023 while I'm recording this, they will not put out the 2023 course until July, August, September, somewhere in there. And this is for lesson seven. Lesson seven, as you'll see down here, has to do with sprites and events. Events are anything that triggers other things to happen in your game, animation, whatever you're coding. So let's go ahead and get started. Question one is a prediction. Which are the multiple choice questions? So we're going to go ahead and read it. As you can see, there are a lot of questions in lesson seven. There are 19 of them. It says, read the code, then make a prediction. So we're going to read the code first. It says, when run, set background color to green, make a new soccer ball sprite at 75, 200. Sprite begins spinning right. Sprite begins moving east. So it's going to create a soccer ball that will spin right and move east. The sprite will just spin right is A. The sprite will just move to east is B. The sprite will spin and move at the same time as C, and the sprite will spin first and then move later. Um, I think they are going to move at the exact same time. I'm going to pick C. If you're new to code.org and the express course, you can pick whichever one you want. It will still go green for a lot of coursework. That means you will still get your points. Um, but of course you want to try to get the right answer. Let's see if I'm correct with C. It begins spinning and moving at the same time. So it says correct. Both behaviors will happen simultaneously, which means again, at the same time. There is a video here for question two, which hopefully you will watch, which will explain things similarly to how I'm going to, as we do each question. Question three says, quick review. In this lesson, we'll be doing more with sprites and behaviors. First, let's practice what you learned in the last lesson, which would be lesson six. Do this, make a sprite, set the sprite size, begin any behavior. So first we need to make a sprite. So we go here to our choice of blocks, make new sprite. Um, I'm gonna choose the blue dude. It's going to automatically make it at 200, you know, uh, 200 for its X and Y coordinates. If you want to change that, you can either hand put in whatever numbers you think it is right there, or you can click on the pin and move it to wherever you want. And that's the same as it always is. Set the sprite size. So we're going to go again to sprites and get this set size to 50. Make sure, and I goof on this all the time, you'll see me do it, I'm sure, probably somewhere in lesson seven even, you have to match these. So if I called a blue character, I need to set the size for the blue character. Otherwise, it's trying to set a size for a red character that doesn't exist. My goodness, my fan's working overtime, and all I'm doing is this. I don't have any other tabs open, so time for a new laptop. Then the last thing is begin any behavior. So we're going to go here to behaviors and get this sprite begins. Again, don't forget to change it to the sprite that you chose. And I'm going to have the sprite begin I'm not looping, moving east and looping. There we go. Looping means it will go to the edge and then come back and start over, which you'll see when I click run. I'm not sure if the mic's picking up the sound of the fan, but if it is, sorry, like I said, computer's uh, having a hard time using Screencastify and Code.org for some reason. Number three, finish the level, press continue to go on. We will. All right, time events. Events make it easy to change what happens over time as your program runs. Use an at blank seconds event 
to make the sprite begin a new behavior after some time has passed. Do this. Add an at three seconds event block to your workspace. So we're going to go over here. We have this new category that we hadn't seen in the previous lessons called events. And we're going to get this at three seconds. It does not have to attach to these because it's an event. When run is an event when you press the run button. At three seconds is an event. When that happens, three seconds have gone by. Everything that's attached to this will happen. Connect a sprite begins block under this event. So we are going to get a, sorry, behaviors, sprite begins. Let me shrink this so we can see what we're doing. Again, make sure these are all the same. I've left it to the default red dude this time, just to save us some time. And we're going to have him begin, it says the sprite should begin a second behavior after some time has passed. So if you look up here, he's already jittering. At three seconds, he's going to start fluttering. We never tell him to stop jittering. So in theory, he should still jitter and do whatever this is. Let's see if he does. So here's our counter up over here. It's kind of hard to see, but he's jittering a bit. And now he is also fluttering because it has been three seconds. So let's play that one more time. So you can see him jittering, getting a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And then now that the timer has passed three seconds, he's also kind of moving around the screen a little bit. It might be difficult to tell because that's so small, but we'll use different uh, behaviors in other questions so you can tell more. All right, number five, key events. Events make it possible to create programs that are interactive. Use the when blank pressed event block to change the sprite size, position, or rotation when the user presses a key. This is a block that you will use a ton if you are making a game. For example, if you think of an old school Nintendo game, like a side scroller, like the original Super Mario, and you press the up joystick, or in this case, the up button, you want him to go up or perhaps jump depending on the game. If you press left, you want him to go left. If you press right, you want him to go right. This is the button that's gonna make it do that. When, let's say right is pressed, everything you connect underneath this will happen. You're gonna want him to move right or east in this case. If you press left, you want him to move left or west in this case. So even the most basic of games will usually have some type of controls and you will need these blocks. There are a couple of other ways to do it as well. Um, also, if you are interested in using Scratch or learning more um, in depth and going on to JavaScript, there are quite a few different ways you can do this, but the standard way in code.org is to use these event blocks that say when, up, down, left, right, and you can use W, it doesn't matter what you use. WASD, you can use any key you want. You can say when six is pressed, make him jump, it's fine. Whatever you want for your own um, project. But um, if you want to find out more about how to do that in Scratch or on code.org using JavaScript, then please go ahead and subscribe. And I will be posting, um, you might also want to turn on post notifications. I will be posting some sample games in code.org. And then we are moving soon on to Scratch to look at some more complex things. OK, so back to this. Question five, do this. Add a one key breath pressed event block to your workspace. It's like a tongue twister right there. So you want events when, and we have up pressed, which is fine. Connect a change block under this event. Press the arrow key keys on your screen or keyboard after pressing run. So they want this block change, and we can change the size. We can change the rotation, we can change the X position, or we can change the Y position. Since this is when up pressed, I'm going to change the Y position by 10. And that's a positive 10. If I made it a negative 10, it could go down. That's kind of a whole nother story. And again, a little bit more something you would need for scratch than code.org. But I thought I would mention it since I know there are a lot of people um, that follow my channel for both things. So let's go ahead and press run. And we're gonna press the up arrow and I goofed. 
what did I do? Oh, it's not working there, but it's working when I do it on my keyboard. Why? Oh, now it is. The trackpad isn't working unless I push down. I have a Mac. Usually it works fine. I'm not sure why it didn't this time, but good. Click keep playing to make changes to your code and run it again. Press continue when you are ready for the next challenge. You can do more changes here if you want to. I'm going to go ahead on to question six. Switching behaviors. If you want to switch from one behavior to another, you need to stop the old behavior and begin the new behavior at the same time. You can use a new block to make sprites stop their current behaviors. So I really wish you guys could see me because when I teach this in my classes in person, I have a great little demonstration I do, but let's just kind of visualize. So if I'm standing still and facing you and you tell me, okay, generic, walk to the right, and I start walking to the right, and then you say, walk to the left, but I'm still walking to the right, I kind of have to stop. I'm walking to the right and left at the same time, which means I'm not going anywhere. I'm not sure if that really makes sense without the visual, but I'm trying to walk to the right and the left at the exact same time, which makes me just stand still. That's the same thing with your sprites. So they want you to stop having this little crab, which we'll look at in a sec, moving east, which is this direction. You always have north up on a map or in code.org. And then after two seconds, the sprite is going to stop moving east and begin moving west. This is what they want you to do. I'm going to show you why if you don't put that stop in there, it doesn't work in a minute. But let's first watch this. So after two seconds, which we've just reached, he stops and goes the other way. If we had not put the stop in there, and let's hope they actually, oh, they won't let us take it off because they don't want kids to goof. They don't want people to goof when they're learning this. All right, well, trust me, in the old version, if you want to go back and do the Express Course 2021, you can see because in those questions, they would let you take the stop off. In fact, they didn't give you the stop. You had to come up with it on your own. If you take the stop out at two seconds, it will just stand still because it's still trying to move east or right from this block, and it's trying to move west or left from that block at the same exact time. So let's let it go ahead and run out its timer. Gives us our little doo doo, and we can go on to question seven. Question seven of lesson seven says opposite behaviors. Some behaviors do opposite things like moving east, moving west, growing, shrinking, or spinning right, spinning left. If a sprite has two opposite behaviors, it might seem like the sprite isn't doing anything at all, which is exactly what I was just explaining in the last question. Do this, run the code and see what happens at three seconds. So this is actually going to give you the example that I was trying to show you on the last one. I don't know why they split it up into two questions in the 2022 course, but apparently they have. So, oops, make it so we can read it. Let's click run and see what happens like it asks us to. It's turning left and then it's now trying to turn left and right at the same time. So it goes nowhere. Your sprite needs to spin both left and right at a different time. So if we just go in here at three seconds and tell it, oops, sorry, Sprite stops doing what it was doing before, which is spinning left. There it is. Sprite begins spinning right. We should be good. It's going to stop doing what it was doing before start doing its new thing. Let's test that out. There we go. Let our timer run out at the bottom. And now it will let us continue to question eight. Blast off. It's funny because again, my fan kicked on. It sounds like my laptop's going to blast off. I really hope you guys can't hear that. I'm sorry. I'll quit talking about it. It's just frustrating. I guess I need a new one, like I said. This ship is ready to go. Use an at eight seconds event to make the ship begin moving forward after eight seconds. Maybe if I get a thousand subs, I can monetize this channel <laughs> that I can afford to buy a new laptop. All right, so at eight seconds under events, make the ship begin moving forward. So it tells us 
add an at eight seconds event block to your workspace. I've already done that. Connect a sprite begins block under this event. We've done that. Give the sprite a behavior to make it blast off and they want it to blast off by moving right across the screen and right is east as well. So we are going to go down here and look for a moving east or a right. It has spinning right, but it does not have moving right. So we will do moving east. There are more choices when you go up here to make your actual projects. When you um, click in Sprite Lab, there are a lot more choices, but for now they've only given us these few blocks. So we will use moving east. Now that it's eight seconds, there it goes. If I wanted it to come back and appear on the other side of the screen again, I could have used the moving east and looping, and it would have just continued over and over and over. Or moving west would have done it this way. All right, so let's move on to nine. We're halfway. Debug order matters. There's a bug in this code. Do this, run the code and see what happens. Click below to read about the bug. So let's run it and see what happens. He's moving west. Then at about two seconds in, it looks like he stopped and that was it. It says, what's the bug? So I would say the bug is he stops moving after second, two seconds. Change the order of the code underneath at two seconds so that the sprite only stops the old behaviors. So at two seconds, he's going to begin patrolling. He's going to begin moving north. He's going to begin fluttering, but then it tells you it tells it to stop everything. We don't want it to stop everything because that means it's going to do all this for a split second you won't even see and then just stop. We don't want this. We either want to move this at the beginning so it stops all the old uh, behaviors over here that it has been doing for two seconds and does these or you could go in if they had blocks over here and do a sprite stops wobbling sprite stops moving east and then put these but a sprite stops everything does the same thing since there's more than one let's double check it says your sprite should have exactly three behaviors Try moving the stops everything block to a different place in your code, which we've done. So let's run it now. After two seconds, there it goes. It kind of blasts off. Flies around the screen a little bit. We'll let this timer run out down here. And there we go. I'm really glad that code.org added so many um, lessons on sprites. They took them a year or two to kind of flush out all the kinks and everything. And there were some things that didn't load very well in the 2020 and the 2021 versions of the express course, but it's getting better. And it really helps for the creation of, like I said, games or animations or things like that. Things that are a little more interactive. So do a barrel roll. Let's make the plane sprite spin left when you press one key and right when you press the other key so this is similar to again like a mario game or any other type of side scroller um where you're going to want to be able to control where the character goes there's lots of games where you would do that actually not just side scrollers do you remember this block sprite stops do this read the code below carefully we will in a sec Run the code and press both arrows to see what happens. What's the bug? So let's do that first. We're going to click run. I'm actually going to use my keyboard and that's the left and that's the right, which is not doing anything and up and down. Don't do anything as well. Only left. And now that I've pressed right, left won't work anymore either. It says, let's reset it. Add, that's a grammatical error. It should say add a sprite stops block under each event. It should not say add an. Sorry, you could tell I was an ELA teacher before I did computers. Add a sprite stops block under each event. I guess they still haven't worked out quite all the bugs. Use this block to stop the opposite behavior. So we start off with it fluttering and when left is pressed, it begins spinning left. When right is pressed, we need it to 
stop, we could also use that stop everything block, but since it's only stopping one thing, I'm just going to use this. Stop. Where's our spinning left? Stop spinning left. Start spinning right. And we need to do the exact opposite over here. It needs to stop spinning right and start spinning left. That way if it's already going right, it'll stop and then go left. And it, you won't even notice or normally you won't even notice with code.org. Sometimes there's a tiny little pinch of lag, but you shouldn't even notice that it stops for that split second and then goes the other way. And in scratch, you won't notice at all. All right. So I think we're good. When left is pressed, if it's spinning right, it'll stop and spin left and right. When right's pressed, it'll stop spinning left if it is and spin right. Let's run it. So I'm going to press left and it's going to spin left, press right and it's going to spin right. And it will even let us go back to left. And you can see that split second where it kind of stops and changes direction. Um, that's just because code.org is a little bit more simplistic than some other sites that teach coding like Scratch. Scratch doesn't actually teach coding. Scratch allows you to code and create, but it doesn't actually have lessons like this, which is why I use code.org. And then I just make my own lessons for Scratch, which like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to start making and posting Scratch videos. So sub and turn on your notifications if that's something you're interested in. 11, shrink and grow. Let's make the sprite shrink when you press one key and grow when you press the other. Do you remember this block? Sprite stops. So it's the same thing we just did, except we are going to change it from growing and shrinking. So we know we're going to have to put a stop in here. So let's move these. It's going to when up is pressed, we want it to grow. So we will tell it to stop shrinking. Shrinking was at the top, but I guess not. There it is. Stop shrinking. And when down is pressed, we want it to shrink. So we'll tell it to stop growing. Come on, mouse. All right. They wanted you to run it and see what the bug was. We can already predict running it before what the bug was going to be because we just talked about it in the last question. In fact, we've been talking about it since question six when I brought it up before they even did in the questions. Oh, sorry. Shoot. Forgot. I got to press up to grow and down to shrink. I'm so busy explaining it. I didn't test it properly. Um, make sure when you're on these questions that asks you to press the arrows that you actually do. If you don't press the arrows to test it out, it will tell you you've done it wrong even if you've done it right because you didn't test it. And that's, I don't know, I wish they wouldn't do it that way, but in order to get it to go green, that's what you need to do. Lesson seven, question 12. When versus while. A lot of people have a hard time with this. The when slash while, however much pressed block, has two important options. It can be triggered when a key is first pressed, so that's one time or while the key is pressed over and over again. Setting this block to while can make your interactive animations faster and smoother. Use the when slash while key pressed event block to rapid change the sprite size while the user presses a key. So I'm trying to hurry because I only have a half an hour to do this for free on Screencastify. If this lesson goes over a half an hour, look for a part two because I think it might. But I think it's important for me to take a second and explain the difference between when and while. So if you are standing, again, imagine me in the front of the room that you're learning coding in. If I'm standing and I'm looking at the floor and there is a piece of paper and you tell me when there's a piece of paper in front of me to pick it up, I will stop and pick it up. But then I'm going to keep going and doing whatever I was doing. While there is a piece of paper in front of me, I'm going to keep picking them up. So if you put a stack of 12 papers in front of me and you say, hey, when there's a piece of paper in front of you, pick it up, I'm going to pick up one and then continue walking. But if you say while there are papers in front of you, pick them up, I'm going to look down. Is there a piece of paper? Yep. Pick it up. Look down. Is there a piece of paper? Yep. Because there were 12, remember? Pick it up. And I'm going to just keep doing that until all 12 pieces have been picked up and 
there are no more left and then I will continue on. We'll come back to this in a later lesson, but I at least wanted to mention it because it really messes people up. So the same thing with changing size or direction. When will make it happen one time. Even if you hold the button down, it's only going to happen one time. While will make it continue to happen. So if you were doing, again, a side scroller game like Mario and you want him to be able to move right, you need to do the while button. Otherwise, when you press the right button, he's going to move one step and stop. If you press the right button and you've used the while key, he's going to go, are they pressing the key? Yep, I'll move. Are they pressing the key? Yep, I'll move. Are they pressing the key? Yep, I'll move. And he's going to keep going and it's going to just look like him running, which is what you want. Okay, enough of that. I know some of you are just here for the answers, but you need the explanations too, or you won't know how to make your own stuff. Add a key pressed event to your workspace. So we're gonna go to events. This is the key pressed event. If we do a when up pressed, it's gonna be different than a while. Connect a change size by action block under this event. So right here, change size by five. We'll say five's good enough. Press the arrow keys on your screen or keyboard after pressing run. So we're gonna press run. And when we press up, it's gonna get bigger. But if I hold up down, it doesn't do anything else. It just goes once. Let's do that one more time. So I'm gonna press, oops, sorry, I forgot to press run. Press bigger, press bigger, press bigger. But if I press and hold down, nothing. It only does it one time and then continues with whatever other code it has. If I change this to while and I press, it'll still do it the whole time I hold it. So watch, I'll hold, 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 hold. Oh, one time down, a bit faster. I'm gonna hold and it's just gonna keep going. And then I let go it'll stop. So while I'm holding that key, it's going to keep doing it. There's an extra challenge at the bottom, by the way. If you want to try that, it's just to make it shrink and grow. But like I said, I only can make a 30 minute video using the free software that I'm using today. So we're going to try to move on. When versus while. The when while Blank pressed has two important options. It can be triggered when a key is first pressed one time or while the key is pressed over and over again. Setting this block to while can make your interactive animations faster and smoother. This is exactly what I was just explaining in 12. They're just kind of spelling it out. 12 is when, 13 is while. So all of these say when pressed, and these are movements as opposed to shrinking and growing. It's going to move, like the up button, move the penguin five pixels north, which is up. And same for down, left, and right. So just like I was explaining with Mario, if we click run, up, 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 I have to keep pressing, I have to keep pressing. And to play a game like this is very slow and tedious. And especially when we have modern games with open worlds, it just seems super archaic, super old fashioned. But if we change all these to say while, it will run more like a traditional, you know, 80s side scroller type moving game. Or even a more modern game like Switch. I mean, Animal Crossing is really the same thing. If you've ever played that like on Nintendo Switch or something. So now I'm pressing the keys and when I hold them, you can see he moves in a much more natural fashion, something we're more used to for a game. There are times when you want to use when, just not usually for movements of a character. Some games, it's good. It's good for maze games where you want to be really precise and not hit walls or your character will die, things like that. Okay, so question 14, free play, make a scene. This is the project you created during the last lesson. They're talking about lesson six. With events, you can now make different things happen over time or when the user presses a key. Anyway, it says do this, add events to your program. So if we go to events, after three seconds, we can make something else happen. Add code under each event to change your sprites, their properties, or their behaviors. Since this is a free play scene, you can literally do whatever you want. I'm just gonna quickly toss a couple of things on here just to show you. 
So let's say after three seconds, I'm going to add that cheese. Oh, or maybe ice cream. <laughs> I accidentally hit ice cream, so let's just use ice cream. And I'm going to move it a little bit over to around there. And let's make the apple do something. Let's have the apple start, I don't know, moving west and looping, which means it will go left, west. And when it gets here, it'll come back. And at three seconds, let's have it stop. Moving west and looping. We learned that in the last questions. Oops, that's moving east. And then we'll have it start. I don't know. What should we have it start doing? It doesn't really matter what we put on here. Sprite begins. Come on, block connect. Um, I want to like have it zoom around. Does it have wandering? It does have wandering. By the way, where this says edit, you can change these behaviors to do different things, faster, slower, etc. We'll talk about that in a future lesson. Right now, though, let's click run. So it's going to loop. And after three seconds, it's going to stop and start wandering around. It's kind of abrupt. It's stopped there, but I'm going to actually change this to five seconds so you can see that a little better and run it one more time. And now it's wandering around. So it's going to loop. That way you can see what looping does a little better. And then at five seconds, it stopped and started wandering around. When you're finished with the free plays, however you want it, you can click finish and it will let you continue. Yes, you can click run and finish without changing much of anything. And it will still turn green, which for a lot of courses means you'll still get points. But if you don't actually play with it and learn anything, you're not going to be able to create your own projects afterwards. So I really strongly suggest that you mess around with stuff and see what it does. Plus, I think it's pretty fun. But let's click finish. Um, also, this says you're finished. Click continue to move on to the next level, which it usually says. But it also says that you can copy a link to send to someone. You can post on Facebook or Twitter. No offense. but hardly anybody I know uses Facebook or Twitter, and I'm not really sure why you would want to tweet out this game. It's strange that they don't have something more like Instagram or Snap or whatever, but um, you can keep playing to make changes, or you can click continue like this says. Sending it to your phone will literally just text you a link to your phone, and that's usually the most fun to actually see it on your phone and get to play it or watch it if it's an animation. All right, so 15, very similar. It just has fish. Again, it has this link, which means whatever you put here should get copied to 16, but I don't think it does. We'll see when we get there, because as you can see, I haven't done these ones before. I deliberately didn't do them so I could do them with you and you could see any problems that I had with them. All right, so this is the same thing. It's a project you created during the last lesson, which would be lesson six. And you can add different events. It's just going to give you different choices now. So you can make some fish. Let's see. I'm going to make this fish be the blue one. And then you can do orange fish begins moving east and looping. And maybe we'll make the blue fish wander around. Again, if you want the blue fish to do it, don't forget to change this to blue fish. Where's wandering? Then they want us to use an event. So at three seconds, I'm going to do five seconds again, though just to make it a little easier to see the changes. I will add another sprite. Oops, not what I meant to do. There we go. I will have a different sprite pop up. Um, let's use this funny big tooth greenish turquoise, whatever aqua colored one. 
and we'll make him begin doing something else. So he'll just kind of appear out of nowhere. If we want him to instead appear all the way on the edge of the screen, so it looks like he comes in a little more naturally, you could change his starting point by clicking the pin over to the edge, which is what I just did. Um, let's just have him wander too. All right, let's run. So there are our, there are our two fish. Hey, look. Sorry, I'm getting pop-ups. I don't think you guys can see those though. There's our third fish. All right, finish. Again, you have the same choices for sending them or just continuing. Sixteen is the same kind of thing, just with a mountainous background and some birds. Again, it says it is linked to the next question, but it's actually not. Although maybe it's linked to lesson six. Hmm. I wonder. Well, let's go test that in a minute. So you can make some changes here. Same thing. Add some stuff. Make sure you add an event. You could also mess around with the up, down, left, and right again. So like when right pressed, sprite begins, or you could also do move. Five pixels, let's see, right is east. And you could do that for up, down, left, and right. Actually, I really strongly suggest on one of these free plays that you do that so you can kind of get used to it. See how it works. So this one would be west. And then... I'm going to grab two of these really fast. We're going to do up and down because we already did left and right. So for events, we would get when up and when down. So up would be north. Down would be south. And now when we press run, press run, excuse me, we should be able to move this up, down, left, right. I'm clicking over and over and over. I'm not sure if you can hear that on the mic or not because I used when. If I want it to move more smoothly, remember that you have to change these to while. And yes, you have to change all four of them or only the directions you change will do it smoothly. So let's reset, run. And now you can see he goes up, down, left, and right much more smoothly. Let's finish and look at 17. Come on, computer. 17 looks like it's the same exact thing, but with the space background, add events, add code under each event to change your sprites, their properties, or their behaviors. So literally, they're just giving you different scenarios from 14, 15, 16, 17, birds, fish, space, different things. Let's check out 18. Seems a bit repetitive to me, but this one is some brighter colors and a bunny. Yep, same thing. And last, this one has some people with a graph background or a person, you could add more people. Let's see if they give you the choice. Looks like they do. Oh, all right. So on number 19, they actually let you choose the costumes. When you are using the actual Sprite Lab to make a project, you have the choice of tons of costumes. So let's go ahead and take a second and, and check those out. If I go in here to the costume library, which I'll show you one more time in a minute, you have tons of different things you can use. Um, I'm going to pick some people. So let's pick her. And then I will go back up here to where it says code and I can see my code. And I can add, she's one of my choices now. Um, I'm actually just going to ditch this. It's in the way. 
then I can add another one. So again, I'll go to sprites. I'll make new, but if I don't want two of her, I can go new costume people. Let's pick someone else. We'll pick this kid. So now we also have him. So he's going to show up. Yes, I'm assuming they're genders. We don't know them, so hopefully they're not offended if I goof. There we go. So we have two characters now. We can also do events. Same as we did for the other ones. Um, you can pick backgrounds. They're starting to have more of the block choices that you'll have when you actually use Sprite Lab. All right, so that was lesson seven. I hope that was helpful. Go ahead and click over here. Well, it might not be over here for you guys. Yes, I think it should be. If you would like to see lesson eight, I will be posting that in just a little bit. So hopefully that link should be there for you. Also, like I said, please subscribe if you are interested in getting more of these lessons or and or you would like to start to learn scratch.mit.edu, which is a much more comprehensive, thorough way of creating your own games with a Blockly language, which is what this is. Thanks. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, I will see you in the next one.